we are going to continue our study on the gas laws today. So in our last lesson, we learned about Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law uses two pressures and two volumes. Today, we're going to learn about our second gas law, which is Charles's Law. So uh, again, this is named after the scientist who was able to study this and eloquently share it with the community and get his name in there. So this is Charles's Law. Now with Charles's Law, we are going to look at volume and temperature. Okay, so we see it is different. So we're looking at different aspects. So in Charles's gas law, the volume and the temperature of a gas are directly related if you keep the mass and the pressure the same. Okay, so remember whenever we are using the gas laws, our temperature is going to be measured in Kelvin. So check back on your equation sheet and make sure that you added to that how to convert from Celsius to Kelvin and Kelvin to Celsius. Okay. To do that, if you are given degrees Celsius, you simply add 273 to, to it and that will give you your Kelvin. Okay. So be careful when you're working on these problems and make sure that you always convert those Celsius temperatures to Kelvin before you start calculating or you will get the wrong answer. Okay? All right. So here is our equation for Charles's law. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. The V stands for volume. The T stands for temperature and must be in Kelvin. Volume could be centimeters cubed or it could be milliliters. Either one will work. The one here uh, being the first measurement, the starting measurement, the two being those ending measurements. So just like with Boyle's Law, we've got to be careful not to mix up where our numbers go in the equation. Okay, Make sure that the beginning volume and the beginning temperature go together and your beginning or your ending volume and your ending temperature go together. Okay, so be sure that we're focusing on that. So let's do a practice problem and let's see what this is going to look like. All right, so a gas occupies 473 centimeters cubed at 36 degrees Celsius. Find its volume at 94 degrees Celsius. So let's analyze this and see what information we have, what information do we need. So we have a volume, 473 centimeters cubed. Okay, check. Next, we have a temperature, 36 degrees Celsius, but I cannot use degrees Celsius, so I need to convert this into Kelvin. I'm going to do that by adding 273. Okay, so 36 plus 273 is 309 Kelvin, 309K. So now, that temperature is good for me to use. Okay, so those are my beginning numbers. Those are my ones. Next, I need to find the volume. So that's my question mark at 94 degrees Celsius. Again, I cannot use that degree Celsius. We need to convert that into Kelvin. I'm going to add 273. So 94 plus 273 equals 367. <gasps> K. That should have a K there. I dropped my unit. Okay, so make sure you write your unit in there. Don't forget that. You don't want to drop those. So I'm going to look at my equation sheet and I'm going to see what equation do I have that has two V's and two T's in it. And I have my Charles's gas law equation. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to plug my numbers in. So in V1, I'm going to put 473. In T1, I'm going to put that 309K. Okay, I'm going to put my Kelvin. V2, I'm going to put an X or a question mark. And T2, I'm going to put that 367K. Okay, so we see our equation there with the numbers filled in. I chose to use an X to represent my unknown. And I remembered to put my unit in there that time, so that's good. All right, so now... We use our algebra skills to solve for that x. To do that on this side, we can go ahead and just do that division. So I'm going to do 473 divided by 309. 
that's going to give me 1.531. Okay, neither one of these cancel out, so I had to keep those centimeters cubed over K. This side, I didn't do anything yet, so I just carried that on down because I didn't do anything. All right, wanting to solve for my X. Now we're at the point where I can get that X by itself. So over here, we're doing X divided by 367. So remember to get rid of that. We do the opposite. So we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 367. Okay, so this side multiplied by 367. Got to do the same thing over here. Multiply it by 367. When I do that, we're going to get to cancel some stuff out. So over here on this side, the 367 completely cancels out. It's gone. Now all I have left is the X. On this side, my K's cancel out. So that Kelvin, I get to drop that unit because they canceled each other out. Type into my calculator 367 times 1.531, and I get 561.88. Okay, what unit was left after I canceled everything I could cancel? Centimeters cubed. So let's analyze these results and see if that is something that I expected. I was looking for a volume. My units that got left were centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed is a measurement of volume, so that looks good. Now, I know that these go together, so if I look, my temperature increased. Temperature increased, so my volume should also increase, and my original volume was 473. My calculated volume is larger, 561, so that is also expected. So it looks like I did a good job. Once again, if you are lost, if you don't know how to do this, if you could not get this answer, then at, get into contact with me and ask for help so I can help you get in the right place before you start your independent work because that's what's next, Charles's Law Independent Practice.